If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Today, I'm gonna show you how to do model evaluations, specifically RAG evaluations. For example, if you're running a business and you have a chatbot communicating with your customers, you wanna make sure that the information that is giving the customers is accurate, and it can cause big problems if it's not. And also, as you iterate on your AI stack, you wanna make sure you're heading in the right direction. You wanna make sure you're actually improving, and again, Having these benchmarks in place and being able to actually see the improvement in the metrics as you iterate is important. And I'm gonna show you all of this step by step on Amazon Bedrock. Amazon Bedrock is a fully managed service where you can choose from the best models on the market, including ones from Amazon, but also from Meta, Anthropic, and others. And it comes with a ton of really useful features that are especially useful when you are building out a production grade AI implementation. They have agents, they have guardrails for safety, prompt routing, RAG knowledge bases, prompt management, and so much more. Amazon is partnering with me on this video. They wanted me to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do sophisticated model and RAG evaluations. So let me tell you about the use case we're gonna be doing today. We are hotel owners and we have this hotel policy document. We're going to be creating a chatbot that allows our users, any potential visitors to our hotel, to ask questions and to learn more. And this is a very complex property document. It is 26 pages long of some legal stuff, some terms of service, and different policies that they have. So again, very complex. And what we wanna do is we wanna give all of this information to a chatbot to answer user questions about it. So the first thing we need to do is be able to give this knowledge base to one of our models. All right, so if you don't already have an AWS account, go ahead and sign up. It's super simple. So when you first sign up with AWS, you are signed in as a root user, but you have to create something called an I am user to execute these evaluations in full. And by the way, if you already have AWS set up and you already have all of your users set up, you can skip this completely. So come up to the search bar right here, type in I am and just click right there. Once you do that, come on down to the left side and click users. Now, I already created one called Matt. I'll create a second one just so you can see that process. Up here, the orange button, create user, click it. Username, I'll call it Alex, and then you click next. Then we're just gonna leave this selected, add user to group. You can also copy permissions or attach policies directly if you wanna get more advanced with it, but let's keep it simple for now. So then we're gonna click next and create user. So there we go. We have our new user right here. Now it'll take a few moments to finish setting up. All right. So once that's done, click into the new user and we need to add a new group. So add users to groups. And from here, I have an admin group. You might not have anything in here. And if that's the case, you go ahead and click add group. You select administrator access or whatever group policy that you want, and then create user group, select admin, add users to group and there we go. The next thing you're gonna do is click on security credentials right here and then enable console access. And then you can either set a custom password or an auto generated password and then click enable. So the password's right here. You can just click copy. There's the console sign in URL. And then when you're done, you go to this URL, type in your username, type in your password, and you're logged in as that user. And the entire process is going to need three main components. We're going to need whatever the context is. And in our case, as I mentioned, we're going to be a hotel and we're talking about the terms of service. So we need that document and somewhere to store it. We also are going to need prompts. We need a test set, the benchmark to actually test against. And so the prompts are questions and example answers, also known as ground truth, that we are going to be testing the different models against. And then finally, we need a place to store the evaluations. Once the evaluations are done, we wanna put them somewhere, we wanna be able to read them, and now we're gonna set all three of those things up in S3, I'll show you how. So what we need to do is first take that hotel policy document and upload it to an S3 bucket. That just makes it available for other services to use. So come up here, search for S3, and then click S3 right there, okay? So I already have a few, let me show you what I did. So 
I'll create another one. You're gonna click create bucket. It's gonna be a general purpose bucket and we're gonna call it hotel policy. We'll keep the object's ownership the same, the default settings. We'll keep all of these settings exactly the same. And then at the very bottom, create bucket. So our newly created bucket right here, we're gonna go ahead and click into it. And we're going to take that hotel policy document, simply drag it over and it'll give us this little upload form and we click upload. And it'll be very quick because it's a very small document. Now we're not quite done. The buckets by default are closed off. They are not exposed to other services and certainly not the public web. But of course you can change those settings. Let me show you how. So once you're done here, click close and you're going to go over to permissions. Now from the permissions tab in this bucket, you're going to scroll all the way down to this portion that says cross origin resource sharing, also known as cores. And then you're gonna click edit and you're going to paste this in. Now, you don't have this, but I will drop a gist in the description below. You could just copy paste this right in. And all we're doing is allowing it to be exposed to other services. And once you have that set up, go ahead and click save changes. Now that bucket is exposed. We have to do it to the other buckets we create. All right, so we've created the hotel policy. Let's now create the bucket that's going to hold all of our prompts. So go ahead, click create bucket again. Let's say it's gonna be hotel prompts. And I think I have one already named that. So I'm gonna name it YT after that. All right, then scroll down to the bottom, create bucket. And then last, we need a place to store the evaluations. Let's create that bucket. So create bucket, eval store, and I already have one, so I'm gonna call it eval store YT. Scroll down to the bottom, create bucket. Now, just like before, we need to set the cores for these two other buckets. So we go to hotel prompts YT, permissions, scroll to the bottom, edit, paste those same settings in there and save changes. Now back to buckets one more time. We're gonna go to eval store YT, permissions, same as before, click edit, paste it in there, save changes. So once we have that eval store YT bucket, go ahead and click into it and we're gonna need to create a folder. This is the folder in which the evals will be stored. So go ahead and click create folder and we can name it eval-store. You can name it anything you want though. And then create folder. All right, so now let me show you the actual prompts. And remember, these are the prompts that we're going to be testing the models against. And it also includes an example of the correct answer also known as the ground truth. So here's the format. I'll drop this in the description below so you have it, you can format it how you need to. So here are some examples. I'll be arriving late tomorrow night around 11 p.m. What's your check-in process and will there still be someone at the desk to help me? So these are very common questions that the hotel chatbot might be getting from potential visitors. And so over here under reference responses right there, we have, yes, our front desk is staffed 24 hours to assist with check-in regardless of your arrival time and so on. All of this is lifted from that terms of service document that I showed you. And so going back to the S3 bucket, we're going to go ahead and click into hotel prompts YT. And we're simply gonna take that document, which is JSON L format and drop it in, click upload, and then we're done. So now we have those three new buckets. One of them has our prompts. One of them has our knowledge source and the other is just waiting to get the evaluations. Now we get to the fun part. Let's create our actual knowledge bases. So we click create knowledge base with vector store, everything you can leave as the default, click next. And then right here where it says S3 source, we're gonna click browse S3 and we're going to look for the bucket that we just created. So that's hotel policy, click it. And then we have our hotel policy document, click here to select it and then choose. Everything else can be left the same. But if you wanted to, you can set some of these settings like chunking strategy and so forth. So go ahead and click next. We're going to select an embeddings model. So click select model right there. And we're gonna be using Amazon's own Titan text embeddings V2. So click that on demand, apply. Everything else can stay the same. Go ahead and click next, review. Go ahead, scroll to the bottom and click create knowledge base. And so this might take a few moments. Now what's happening at this point is it's taking that raw PDF, the knowledge, the context that we want our model to be able to read from and converting it into a vector store. Then we'll be able to much more easily query against it using our large language model. All right, now our knowledge base is ready to go. Okay, so here's something really important. Once you have that knowledge base created, you need to sync it. And if you don't, the evaluations won't work, so be sure to sync it. And syncing it will prepare it in vector format and just have it ready for your models to query against. So let's go ahead and click into it. You highlight the data source right there. 
and then click sync. And if you want, once it's synced, you can actually click this test knowledge base button and you can actually ask your knowledge base questions right from here. Now we're ready to create our evaluation. So come up to the search bar, start typing evaluations and right there under features, Amazon Bedrock feature evaluations. Since we're testing RAG evaluations, we wanna select the RAG tab here. So you can also just test against models, but since we have this external context, that's what we wanna test against. So click RAG, then from here, click create. All right, so once we've selected RAG evaluation, you can go ahead and give it a name, you can give it a description. I'm gonna leave it as the default name and no description, but you should probably write a description, especially if you're gonna scale this up and do a bunch of these. It'll just make it easier to search through and filter through. All right, and then in the evaluator model, go ahead and click select, and we're gonna select Sonnet 3.7 V1 as our evaluator model. Now keep in mind, the bigger the model, the slower the model that you choose, the longer these evaluations are gonna take. Each prompt that we give it is going to have to run once, for every single metric that we're running against. So just keep it in mind, if you're choosing like 3.7 Sonnet versus three Haiku, one's gonna be a lot faster than the other. So go ahead and click apply, scroll down, and we have two options. We can use our bedrock knowledge base or bring your own inference responses. Now, I'm just gonna show you using the bedrock models and using the bedrock knowledge, but you can bring your own. You can use models that aren't available in AWS and just plug it in. You could use external data sources that are not available in AWS and just plug it right in. So they make it easy to use any of the AI you're already familiar with. All right, so now we're going to choose a knowledge base. Go ahead and click the drop down right there. Select the only one that should be there. The reason I have two is because I've ran through this a couple times just to make sure I got it all down before I showed it to you. And what we're gonna do is we wanna test against the retrieval and response generation. The default selection is retrieval only and you're testing against just its ability to pull the right data from the terms of service document. But we wanna not only test that, we wanna test the model's ability to take that context, to take that knowledge and provide an answer to our users. So go ahead and click right there. Thus, we need to select a model. So click select model. And we have a list of leading AI model providers like Amazon, Anthropic, Meta, et cetera. So you can select the one that you prefer based on your needs. Today, we're gonna be using Nova Premier 1.0. That is Amazon's brand new million token context model. So go ahead and select that and apply. And this is where it starts to get fun. We get to choose the metrics in which we're benchmarking against. So we have a bunch of metrics in here, helpfulness, correctness, faithfulness, professional style, coherence, completeness, relevance. We have some responsible AI metrics, harmfulness, refusal, stereotyping, and you can select any of these and any mixture of them. But here's the really cool part. I'm just gonna touch on this today. We're not gonna dive into it, is you can actually have custom metrics. You can define your own metrics. So if you click add custom metrics, you can describe what you want to test against. So here's an example. Let's say you want your model to always talk like a pirate and say, "R matey and stuff like that. You can actually describe that as a metric for your benchmark. So you can have the pirateness metric and actually have a score associated with how well your model speaks like a pirate. But that's all I'm gonna talk about today for custom metrics. Maybe we'll do another more advanced video where I go over that in detail. All right, now we have to select our data set and where we want our evaluations to be stored after they're done. So that's why we set up those buckets earlier. For the data set for evaluation, go ahead and click Browse S3, and the data set is the prompts. So Hotel Prompts YT, select that JSON L file, choose. And then for the results, where the evaluation results will go, Browse S3, we're going to go to the eval store YT and then select that eval store folder, choose. Then at the very bottom under permissions, if you have an existing permission, go ahead, you can select anyone you want, but I just click create and use new service role, then create. Now, once that's done, it starts creating the evaluation job. Here's the status, it says in progress. Now, I don't wanna wait around for that. Sometimes it could take minutes, but it can take up to an hour. So I've already done this, let me show you the results. So our evaluation finished, I'm gonna go ahead and click into it and we get all of our data. So I ran two metrics, correctness and helpfulness. And so let's look at helpfulness first. We have a distribution by helpfulness score, two of them, fell in the average score range of 0.67 to 0.77. The rest fell between 0.77 and 0.83. 
so pretty darn good. If I scroll down, we also have correctness. We have five examples falling in the 0.5 to 0.6 range and 26 examples in the 0.9 to one range, one being perfect. And from there, if we click this little expand button, we can actually see all of the evaluation results in detail. So here's the question. I'll be arriving late tomorrow night around 11 p.m. What's your check-in process and will there still be someone at the desk to help me? So the generation output, Check-in is mandatory and must be completed at the hotel's reception desk and so on. So this is the generation completed by the inference model that we chose. It also provides references. So if I click on the reference, we can actually see from the hotel policy document the specific language that was used to generate this response. Really cool. And here's the ground truth. So this is what we gave as a potential correct answer and the score of 0.83. And if I click on 0.83, it gives me a description of why it got this score. So the candidate response is sensible, coherent, and clear. It provides a detailed explanation of the check-in process, including the necessary documentation and information required. It also addresses the user's concerns about late night check-in by suggesting that the process should be possible, but recommending direct confirmation with the hotel. All right, so this is everything. Now you have fully tested your model with your context and you have a benchmark. Now you can make changes, benchmark it again, and see if you're improving. I can also use all of the same settings and just test it against a different inference model to see which inference model is best for my knowledge base. I can test different models against each other. There are a lot of different things to test in here. So really it's a very powerful tool and evaluations in general are critical if you're gonna bring your AI to scale. And once you have multiple evaluations done, you can do some really cool comparisons between the models that you're evaluating. Check this out. So I'm gonna select two of these evaluations, then I'm gonna click this compare button right here. And for these two evaluations, I'm testing Nova Pro versus Nova Premier. And as you can see, Nova Pro scored slightly higher on the correctness score, so 0.92 versus 0.94. And if I hover over the helpfulness score, Nova Premier scored slightly higher, 0.82 versus 0.81. And here we can see even more comparison details. So here's for correctness. This is for Nova Pro, and we can see the distribution. And here is Nova Premier, we can see the distribution there. And there was a 1.7% improvement in Nova Pro. Here for helpfulness, we can see a 1.3% decrease in performance for Nova Pro. So that's all of it for today. I wanna to thank Amazon for partnering with me on this video. I was super excited to do an in-depth tutorial on a subject that is so important and often gets overlooked because it's used for production use cases. I'll drop all of the links you need below, including how to access all of these. I'll give you all of the sample data that I used, the core settings, everything, down below in the description. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial. Please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.